Hey guys, I'm back. You feel me? I went on a little hiatus. My nigga, I had to uh, take a little break. I wasn't feeling this shit. I'm, I'm gonna keep it a buck. But I'm back. I'm back. I was having anxiety, my boy. You feel what I'm saying? But now I'm back, bro. And then now we're gonna look at these NBA stars' careers ended pretty fucking weird, bro. We're gonna we're gonna find out which stars ended up weird, my boy. The NBA world is still waiting for the results of two of the biggest stars of the past decade requesting Cheers. two pretty tough trades. James Harden seems pretty hell bent on going to the Clippers and leaving the team that he literally wanted. Yeah, nah. James Harden plus Kawhi Leonard plus Paul George literally equals five rings, bro. I'm calling it right now. You give Kawhi a James level. Kawhi's never had like a James Harden level point guard, bro. Give him a James Harden level point guard. Kawhi gets to his spots. Easy pickings, dog. Easy pickings, my boy. To be on 16 months ago. And Dame is finally trying to leave Portland after waiting way too long. And he's. Yeah, Dame was kind of. Dame should have requested a trade earlier. But now he's damn. He, he's almost in the retirement age. And now he wants a trade. You might as well just stick it out and just be a loser for the rest of your career, bud. Just saying. Team that has some pretty weak packages. It's okay being a loser. You're a uh, two hundred million dollar loser. So you can say that like, you're, you know, that you're part of a select percentage, my boy. And who he is, even with Kevin Durant last summer. We knew he loved the idea of joining Phoenix. The Suns, they were a team that always had a good to great package for KD. So that trade felt more realistic. Obviously, it took a little bit of time, but we see how that trade is going now. Miami, they don't really have the most favorable packages for a player that's coming off of probably his best year of his career. Last year was Dame's best in points, and it was his most efficient. Even only playing 58 games, he had the most 40 point plus games out of anybody. He was the only player to have multiple 60 point games. And obviously, they just be carrying the most garbage rosters. Only, I, I don't know, man. I feel bad for him, bro. He keeps being loyal and then he, he's like a hoe that you keep, like, you just fuck over and over again. And she's still loyal despite you just doing her completely fucking dirty. You know what I'm saying? Because she, she love you. She love you. Just like how Jane loved Portland, but now it's time to say goodbye. He had the historical 71 ball. All of this is great individually, but with what Portland seems to be demanding for all of what I just mentioned and what the team he wants to play for realistically has to offer, it seems to be somewhat hurting Dame now. Today's video is sponsored. I don't, I don't have balls. I don't know what those are. So... I can't, I can't even use this, but use code SWISH because he made the video. At Manscaped.com. How y'all doing? Welcome to Philly. James, this question is for you. I guess it's a two-part question. Why did you want out of Brooklyn, and, and why did you want Philadelphia to be your destination? Because I hate Kyrie Irving, and uh, I was carrying that team damn near by myself until I fucking my hamstring tore. But let's see what let's see what he says to the media. Um, originally, you know, when I was going through everything I was going through, uh, you know, in Houston, uh, Philly was my you know my first choice. Uh, it just didn't happen. So, James Harden. <laughs> James Harden is a very is slick man. Obviously, one. He, he hit a step. He hit a double step back on that question, bit. Best, most dominant <laughs> players the game has ever seen. Yeah, we can talk about his shortcomings Green in the playoffs. Man. We can laugh about him not being in the best shape now. Yeah, Harden is just a complete playoff choker. We don't talk about that enough. Bro chokes harder than a porn star on corn, bro. A corn star on corn. That's crazy. You know, if you get if you get it, you get it. Like, bro, be choking so hard. Like, you would think I was fucking him. I mean, hey, we can even talk about his hey, let's not get too deep. That he continue. Let's, let's not do too much on camera. Use, but none of that can take away from some of the most dominant basketball we've ever seen for a significant stretch of the 2010s. Even if you didn't Step necessarily back. like how he Bring did it. it. His last five years in LeBron. Houston were like all-time level scoring. In his last five years in Houston, he averaged nearly 32. The second most behind him was Steph at around 27. He had 2,000 plus more points than second best Dame. And even with all that scoring, he was still one of the best playmakers in the entire NBA. He had the second most total assist in this span. And not only that, playoffs excluded, he was one of the most reliable, if not the most reliable star on a night-to-night -night basis. If Jokic was a guard, 
If Jokic was a guard, it would have been James Harden. No cap. In the entire league. In his last five years with Houston, he played the most minutes out of anybody in that span. He was second in games played. He only missed 19 games in five years, and he always carried that team on his back, keeping Houston afloat. We know Houston, they never won at all, but they had the third best record in that half decade. But since he's left, his career has been extremely weird. He left Houston in a strange, very unprofessional way, reportedly asking for John Wall over Russ. They made that happen just for him to take his way out of Houston. Then once he got to Brooklyn, playing beside Kyrie and Kevin Durant, so obviously he doesn't have to score that much, he completely reshapes his game into more of that facilitator role, and he thrives. He's James Harden. Please. Yeah, this James Harden was damn near MVP. He was my MVP that year. I'm not even gonna lie. 2021 James Harden, bro. He was carrying the fucking nets while KD and Kyrie just it was not playing, bro. Some of the most efficient, clean basketball of his entire career. Yeah, no Just worries. for him to immediately battle injuries, miss his first playoff game ever. Ironically enough, when it looked like it was his best chance to really get that championship. Crazy. Then his last year in Brooklyn, he looked somewhat washed for certain parts of the season, requested his second trade in like 14 months to Philly where he had another playoff meltdown. He saved his reputation a bit by taking a pay cut last summer, but now this summer, after everything he and the MVP. These are regular season stats because the dogs come out in the playoffs. But let's, hey, I'm not going to get too deep. Did. I'm going to just, just sit back and relax. You know what I'm saying? If I get too deep, niggas this is going to think I'm a demon. Literally one game away from the conference finals on their home court. He's back in the news with his third trade request in three. Because Kawhi, Kawhi solos these two. I said it. Kawhi solos James Harden and Joel Embiid. He could do it. He could literally do it. I swear to God he could do it. Because real dogs come out in the playoffs. So you guys pay attention. Like Niggas like Kawhi. I, I put Curry in there. He might have a bad game here and there. I put Curry in there. I put LeBron in there. Like Playoffs is where you see the dogs, bro. Three years. Kyrie Irving may be one of the... And Kyrie too. Kyrie's a dog in the playoffs. When he plays with LeBron though. Only players in any sport that I've actually seen get more mm -hmm. productive in his respective sport while simultaneously seeing his value diminish. Since leaving Boston, he's averaged 27 points for four straight years. As great as he was before LeBron, with LeBron, after LeBron in Boston, he never did that for his first eight years. There's only been 14 50, 40, 90 seasons. In 2021, he joined that extremely rare club. Last season, in the middle of the year, he went from Brooklyn. So Kyrie Irving's only getting better. Oh, wow. To Dallas. I thought yeah, I, he's honestly been the same for the last few years. Even the stats said it, but he was definitely better than, yeah, 2016. But now nah, he stepped up in the playoffs that year, bro. So His value or his market was still essentially a zero. The contract he just got from Dallas is generally viewed and graded as a negative, and it has nothing to do with basketball. It's because Dallas, they were pretty much bidding against themselves. Kyrie didn't really have much options. <laughs> they have no team Watson. He, 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 he brings too much drama. KD paired together in That's 2019 crazy. just to play 74 total games together. And KD had a better record without him. For whatever reason, whatever team he joins, despite how great it looks on paper, it never truly reaches its yeah, super teams are dead, man. Uh, every team that's won a championship has been a, a team team, you know what I'm saying? If you've been really paying attention, so super teams are dead, man. That shit worked in 2014, my guy. Or you you really need to form, like, like if you're going to go super team, you got to go, like, all in, like, the Warriors. Like, it's either that or uh, you, you, you build a solid team and you go far. Potential. Last year, Dallas didn't Everybody feel because of Kyrie. Deal. Their problems were way deeper than just Kyrie. I talked about it in multiple videos. But it doesn't look good that they collapsed once they got him. Yeah, you gotta do what Phoenix is doing, low key. That's what the Warriors did. You gotta go all in on the super team, or you gotta uh, have a Especially, full team. You can't do two stars and then a bunch of nobodies like that. It don't work no more. Since that's really been his trend since, let's be honest, leaving LeBron. Kyrie still obviously one of the most magical, dynamic talents the game has ever seen. But since leaving Cleveland, his productivity and his talent isn't quite matching what you would expect his trajectory team-wise to be, especially with some of the talent and teams he's been on. Chris Paul is now on the Warriors. Yeah, I forgot about this trade. Man, Chris Paul, this thing is a bum. Oh, <laughs> he's going to be off the bench now, bro. He can't, he can't get to the rim no more, bro. I, I don't remember the last time I saw a Chris Paul layup highlight, bro. 
bro is bro is has to settle for mid ranges. That's all he does. And he does a little pick and roll, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, now nah, he definitely get traded in the middle of the season. You think they you think the Warriors are gonna try to make a championship run with Chris Paul? You're fucking tripping balls, bro. I'm not gonna lie, he get traded mid season, bro. And it feels like if he doesn't, bro, I'll fucking man, I'll go to China and give all those factory workers fucking money. One of those moves that will cringe at. That's not a bad thing, and it's not racist either. I'll do a great thing for a great cause. In a few years, similar to Shaq in Boston or D Wade in Chicago or even D Wade in Cleveland, where you look at it like it never quite felt right in the beginning, in a few years past we knew it was never really the move. Chris Paul is now on his fifth team since 2017 and the way he's been passed around as a legend has been insane. Houston basically- <laughs> Yeah, bro, Swish out did him dirty. He, he, uh, he, he for the streets for real, Chris Paul for the streets. He hasn't found a home. After the Lob City, after Lob City went like terrible, he never really found a home, but Houston, they almost, if they didn't miss 27 straight threes, history would be laughing at the Warriors right now, but, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy he how little Chris things Paul change everything. OKC for his career to die, and in Chris Paul fashion, Hello. he got them to the playoffs and completely rose his stock. Phoenix, that was really his... I feel like also this Chris Paul, OKC Chris Paul is underrated. He got them to the playoffs and completely rose his stock. Phoenix... That was really his best chance to Shanghai. win a championship. Hello. But See, I told you, you can't even get to the rim no more. Bro's going to take a mid-range right next to the fucking... That failed when he seemed to age every time the expectations rolled. When was the last it's time you saw Chris Paul get a layup highlight? 21, after being up 2-0 in the finals, where I really thought they were going to win that championship. They failed. In 2022, after having his second best regular season ever and the best in, like, Phoenix Suns history, they failed again early. <laughs> Luka Doncic in embarrassing fashion and last year after getting KD and becoming crazy. overwhelming favorites to win it all he aged he got hurt and it failed again and now he's on Golden State now Chris Paul the point God he's on the bench of the team and the player that haunted the majority of his prom and if he doesn't win look at the top 10 most winning players since 2011 he's literally the only player on this list without a champ <laughs> that's tough that's tough. He's the best winning loser. That's tough. I mean, hey, bro, if his hamstring didn't blow out, hey, game seven, you know what I'm saying, versus the Warriors, they would have made history. The Rockets were this close, this close to being the best NBA team in history, bro. That's crazy. 11th is James Harden. And Dame, I put him on here because of his situation now. Yeah, nah, bro. Portland basically said, fuck you. We, we're going to waste another point guard's prime. Uh... You know, we're, we're, we're gonna trade you to uh, the magic bud and you could just waste the rest of your career that's what the that's what the blazers want to do but they're not they can't do that because they ain't, they ain't fighting back you're not gonna let that happen Dame said hell no if you trade for me nigga i am I'll, I'll retire on your team right now you know what i'm saying it's, it's a back and forth war between the blazers and the uh, Dame. and how dominant he's really been historically without anything to show for it about a month ago, Dane finally asked for a trade, and currently, the process, it just feels stalled out, tedious, and weird. Portland, I don't think they should just take any old package from Miami, because that'd be stupid. But at the same token, I don't even know what other options they have, because Miami feels like the only bidders. Right now, Dane is 33. He's one of the most dominant players of our era. He's been replaced by Portland position-wise in the middle of this stalling trade request. Not to mention, and I said this multiple times, and this is why this thing has to end. He has the third worst playoff record amongst players that qualify, and the only two players were actually once his teammates. Not to mention, he has the most 60-point games since 2016 and the second most 50-point games, and he's still yet to play with another All-Star mm -hmm. in his prom. That's crazy. That's the definition of wasted talent, bro. Don't waste people's primes, bro. You're a fucked up person if you do that. But yeah, Blazers are the fucked up organization. They they wasted his prime, and now they just <laughs> now they're like, all right, next Not point to guard. Mention, he's burning himself. Next out. star point guard. Every time he makes the prime. playoffs, because he plays the third most minutes per game in the playoffs since 2016. This man has to leave, and right now. It don't even feel like it's moving. This literally feels like Yeah, not nah, worry. Like, as soon as he requested a trade, I'm like, yeah, this shit gonna take a while. So I, in my head, I was like, yeah, nah, they gonna try to trade him by the trade deadline. Not nah, now. Nah. 
That's how the NBA works. He's gonna get traded last second of the trade deadline. He's gonna get put on some random. He'll be put on the Milwaukee Bucks or some shit. Watch, calling that shit. That's how the NBA moves. But yeah, nah. They ain't stuck on that team though. He gonna be stuck on that team for a minute. He gonna be playing right next to Scoop, bro. Two point guards at once. They gonna be and that Simon's literally running like three, six, four fucking guards, bro. Like two of the biggest problems of the last decade doing the fusion dance. Small ass lineup. loyalty and why it's diminished and why it doesn't really have that much value unless you're like Steph playing on a contender and player empowerment and when it's abused, he how abused ugly it is. Out. So you know, abuse, abuse the fuck out of that screen. If you guys like this video, like and I love the video. Clap it up for switch out. You know what I'm saying? Like up the video. Like up my shit too. Cause if you don't, you're a you're a bitch. And uh your mom's gonna die in a car accident if you don't like up my video. So Yeah. Peace out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. I got I don't even wanna do an outro. Fuck you guys.